Hi. Hello. <laughs> Guess what? what? We have Dana and she's going to be talking some really cool stuff about Golang and we should all listen to what she has to say. Yay. Hi everybody, my name is Dana and I work in, uh, on Sonet in Auckland and I have spent a couple of months learning the Golang and I want to share my experience. Um, let's start it. So, just um, I want to mention that Go and Golang is the same thing and I believe Golang was created for the sake of Googling because it's really hard to Google uh, about Go when you just have to use Go, especially now when one famous game was introduced. <laughs> so no, Google, I'm not Googling about how to catch Pokemon, Pokemons. I just want to know about the programming language. So uh, I will call it Go through all this presentation, though there is Golang on the name of the presentation. Um, preface. So I'm a Python developer since uh, 2010, and I have experience with the C and assembly in the past. Uh, I tried C Sharp and C++ and uh, wasn't really happy with that. And uh, as uh, every good developer, I want to have uh, different languages on my arsenal, so I would kind of have a tool chain to solve the different problems. And I was thinking about which uh, language I should learn next. Uh, here what was in my mind, it was Java, um, because Java is quite profitable and quite pro popular language. But when I was looking at the book and documentation, I realized that it's probably not to, I will, I will spend some time to pick up it. And uh, it's a bit obscure when you look at the code, and it scares me a bit. <laughs> so... Uh, Functional languages. Functional languages are quite popular now, even ca cats want to learn it. And uh, <laughs> if, you, um, if you start to learn the uh, functional language, I believe you probably will be even uh, uh, got uh, some programming skills which help you to structure your code, your existing code, non-functional better. And with functional languages, you can easily move to the programming scientist side. Uh, but I wasn't really sure if I'm ready to move from web development, what I was doing currently, to the scientific data science machine learning, which is actually amazing, but uh, don't really saw how I can use the functional language in my day-to-day uh, -day web development. So Go, um, I started to read about it, and I, real I saw that creators of Go is Rob Pike, Robert Grismer, and Cap Ken Thompson, which you probably know, uh, they was uh, working on a different stuff on the operation system like Unix, Blend, uh, Blend 9, C++ and C and B languages. They was working in a Bell Labs uh, for some time, but end up uh, all together on a Google company and uh, programming on C++ and they get frustrated with the C++ feature bloating, like uh, for every task C++ seems to have a different feature and uh, there are lots of features and uh, programming languages became so complicated uh, so every programmer have his own set of uh, features to learn uh, to use and uh, mm, they have a big really uh, complex uh, programs in Google so they like compile for hours and legends say that uh, at one time during the compiling especially big program, they thought like, oh, why not to write the new programming language, which actually will compile fast and we don't have to spend time waiting for that. Um, so here's the points for the Go. It should be compile and execute fast. Uh, should have uh, in-core and simple concurrency. Uh, should, have a uh, should be statically typed and garbage collected. And uh, should have a simple type uh, system without any to obscure hierarchy. And it's based on C. It basically looks like C. Uh, you will see it later in the code. And overall, it's, it should be s clean and simple code. Uh, it should correspond with the uh, modern computers. It should use their ability, their power of multi-core computers. And it's really not about scientific design uh, and putting in this language a lot of features. It should be really simple and easier to learn and like you should start to work with it straight away. And it reminds me that. <laughs> 
So I was thinking, ah, OK, probably that's the language I want to learn. So let's look closer. Uh, Go is, com uh, is compiled, unlike Python, statically typed, unlike Python, and does have Go braces, unlike Python. So this is the hello world, uh, looks like in Go. Uh, it's, a little be, it's a little bit more verbose, but still plain and simple. And as you can see, it's a remi it probably reminds uh, about C, for those of you who knows. Uh, ghost code structure. It's pretty strict. You have to have uh, this structure. You have one Go path, and you have all your packages on workspace, on the package folder, all your sources on a source folder, and uh, all your compiled bins in a bin folder. And um, Rules say that uh, Go programmers typically should have only one workspace, and uh, all, th all this workspace can uh, contain multiple packages, multiple sources, and uh, so the path uh, when you're importing the package will show the whole way, not just import something, but uh, import the GitHub, and uh, that's it. So uh, you can easily get the package using this path. And uh, this is how it looks like when you have uh, a lot of sources. It's a little bit frustrating for the Python developer, I think, but you can get used to that. And about testing. The testing is not frustrating at all. It basically looks like uh, Python testing. It got, uh, uh, Go got his own test framework and uh, special comment in a, uh, in a tool chain, which called Go test. And, uh, Go recognize the test if it starts from the capital test and have uh, the test uh, pointer to testing T as receiver, so pretty much like Python. And yes, you, you should use this command to run all your tests. Uh, dependency management. There is nothing uh, like pip, but you uh, can get this using the command from go to chain go get package and go get update. In a new version, uh, a part of a part of these folders, you will have special vendor folder, which will uh, separate the external packages from your uh, from your own, from your local one, and you still can uh, control the versions of the Go, uh, but unfortunately, for now, by third-party tools. Uh, Go code deployment that's fairly easy uh, in the. Easiest way, you can just uh, have a binary which is statically typed, which you can easily ch check with LDD Linux command. And in simple case, you just can use the go to chain and go install, and you don't need .x and pip running. Uh, but in real life, you probably want to deploy the configuration file, you want to deploy the assets. So uh, as in Python, you can use the tarballs, dip, and docker. Uh, what about syntax? <laughs> Probably in learning is the most important part. Uh, it was for me. So Python and Go are similar. And in this part, I want to show you, so it's not frustrated to, frustrating to learn Go. So as you see, Hello World is quite plain and similar. Um, and slices. Ah, by the way, if you have a problems to see in the code, just yell, I can make it bigger. Um, slices. Uh, Go doesn't have a list. Well, it has arrays, which is typically uh, list. The, the thing is, you have to uh, you have to determine the type of the list, and you have to determine the length. But how can you even work if you what if you don't know the length of the lists? Then you can use the slices. And slices uh, under the hood is basically like a structure which have on it uh, the pointer to the array. So uh, we have with each slice we have underlying array, which is basically slice is just a part of this array. And uh, we have capacity and we have length. And capacity is not like a length. Uh, Length is what actually how many um, how many elements you have, and capacity how many elements you can extend this slice. If you will use extend commands or append. Um, dictionaries. Dictionaries are pretty much like uh, in Python. So uh, the only difference you should have uh, you should. Uh, make it with a special comment, make, and unfortunately, uh, you can't get all keys or values, so you don't have this syntax sugar. You have to iterate through them. 
uh, while loop. So Go syntax is quite simple. And while in Python, we have a while. Uh, in Go, we actually uh, uh, showing the same logic with a for. We use for for infinite loop as well. We're just not specifying anything. <laughs> and we use for for the range uh, loop as well. If statements. Uh, don't get me wrong. Go have if statements, if else, and everything else. And it it does even have go to. Uh, but it, it does have switches as well. So if you miss switches in Python, it's really nice. And it has a fall through thing. Uh, what for me was quite interesting. So if you want to uh, f uh, hit in the case one, go straight away to the second case, you can, yes, you can use fall through. So you like uh, hitting two cases at once. But Python and Go are different. And here's the thing which can be both enjoyable and frustrating to learn, like you have to use it. So exceptions. Uh, here's the Python exceptions and Go. Sorry, there is no <laughs> exceptions in Go. Um, there is something else though, differ and panic and recover, which you can pretty much uh, make the uh, make the program uh, act the same. So differ is the f uh, function which differ is the method which push a uh, function in stack like uh, for instance uh, opening the file we have the same logic when we use with in python uh, and after the logic which was uh, in w uh, like under the width will finished uh, you will have you will have it will close file for you it will like clear the memory and uh, it's specified somewhere in a with i believe but here you can specify the differ function and it will it will say that it will execute after you've done stuff uh, and if you like wrap your logic in a uh, differ function like uh, specified before this differ function will execute after this logic was done uh, panic make uh, panic function make uh, the piece of logic or the function you um, doing uh, like and straight away, and it's just go uh, up to the stack of the uh, your program, but uh, you will you will just like basically halt, halt the program. But if you want to control it, like not just halt with some kind of uh, ugly error, you can use the recover. And recover is the function which returns um, the retur returns you the power to manipulate your piece of code w which you just halted. So it's Basically, you can make it look like try except finally using uh, these three functions. Uh, no exceptions, but in a simple way, you can check errors state as well. So the thing is, uh, the methods uh, function returns actually two variables. It's actually the result, which is f, and error if it if it if it happened. So if error happened, you have to do with something. If not, you just want to go further. And I read that some people complaining that, uh, and for some people frustrating, and well, I'm not lying here. For me, it was frustrating too uh, at the first time. Like I have to check every time if my error is nil, if not. Um, but then if you're doing it, it with try except, is it, is it the same thing? Like basically the more text, it's just, bit different text. Uh, object-oriented programming. That's the thing I really like. <laughs> Go doesn't have something called object or class. It doesn't have self, this, inheritance, types, hierarchy, uh, no explicit relationships between data interfaces, and no method overloading. And when I was reading about this for the first time, I was like, hmm, just another functional language? Not really. Um, it's just a bit different. So in Python, as you can see, you can have a class person, you can have a class attendee which inherit the class person and have access to all the uh, class person data and have his own methods, say hello about, which will deal with the data on a person via inheritance. In Go, you will have struct person with, da uh, with data on it. You will have struct attendee which have his own data as topic and, uh, and you can include the person. So you're not really declare that they 
uh, that attendee is inherit from person. You just include this on it. And there will be function hello, which will receive, uh, which have receiver as struct attendee, and function about. So they kind of all separate pieces. You just compose them how you want to. And this is the main princip uh, principle of the Go, that the composition over uh, implementation. And this is how it looks like in the code. I understand that's a quite a big piece. So uh, let's go through it. So this is the structs with the data, name, city, company, topic, and person included. You define the data structure. Then um, you define the function. And pay attention, this is attendee as a receiver. Uh, when I say receiver, you probably want to think is as an argument. It's just a, a Go terminology. And uh, in the main function, you still can use the data from the person because you have this person included on the attendee. So it's everything fine to the guy be attending, still be able to say hi and about. So, but I should mention that any type of the Go uh, can have uh, his own methods, not only structs, but it's really uncommon to uh, have to any method to have the methods not only structs, but you can do it. And uh, you can add methods uh, of for a type which is only exist uh, in this package, but you can avoid this rule using anonymous fields. So you're not really uh, including on your struct like instance of this, um, uh, say of the type of the different package. You're just including uh, like s some anonymous um, kind of thing uh, through through which you can actually enter to this uh, to this type the data. <coughs> yeah, this is it. Composition over implementation. <laughs> make you. Rem I was hoping to make you remember that uh, from with the animation. And uh, there is actually more. You can. Um, so let's imagine that it's our struct person have say hi and about methods. And there is struct attendee and struct listener, which have their own data and person included. And listener have uh, own method yawn and uh, struct person uh, have say hi and attendee say hi. So which method will be, um, uh, will be like uh, more which method will be executed when you will call it from attendee. So here's the thing, the outer methods have a, a bigger privilege than the inner methods. I call it inner, I call this say hi inner method because uh, person is kind of inside the attendee. And here how it will look at the code. And this is the function. Pay attention that I defined say hi two times. And wa once the receiver was as a person, and other it was an attendee. So in the main program, uh, the attendee, <laughs> uh, Norman, when he will, he will say hi, he will actually mention his, to his topic because he has it. And uh, the previous say hi uh, has it as well. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit like methods overloading, isn't it? Interfaces. Uh, so we want to organize our methods a bit. And say we have an interface as a set of methods. And dev interface have say hi and about. And listener interface have say hi, about, and yarn, like something new. And as we remember, the struct attendee, struct listener, a struct person was having um, person included, so they have these methods, and the interface type def uh, can be applied to them, but only listener has the yarn method, so listener interface can be applied only to listener struct. And here's the thing, actually, uh, you can, uh, interface is not only the set of methods, it's actually the type, and you can assign this type to any variable which uh, have this set of methods, which this interface have. So here, oh, sorry. <laughs> so here the John, Jolene, and Steve, because uh, they all have the person uh, included and they all have a dev interface corresponding to them, say hi and about. <laughs> I can actually uh, declare the slice of this uh, interface and put uh, all this uh, all the structs on this slide and iterate through them, which is looks looks a bit like generics. 
and duck typing. <laughs> uh, here's the thing, though Go is like have a strict type language, you could duck type with the interfaces. Uh, because it has empty interfaces. The empty interface uh, doesn't contain any single method. Since, uh, so we actually can declare anything by this empty interface because it will implement all zero its methods. For instance, you can actually, um, you can uh, uh, um, make interface as receive the two methods as argument. And uh, this behavior usually uh, used for the storing uh, structs or methods inside, not really for behavior changing. And for instance, you can uh, use interfaces to functions reloading for standard function reloading. Uh, as I said, there is a, um, say let's reload the standard uh, print, print method. Uh, it's a Probably when I was reading about this first, I was thinking like, oh, is it looks about monkey patching? Not at all. You can actually like inherit this, like inherit, and override it a bit. I will explain that um, printf have a uh, stringer interface, and this interface have a string method inside. So I make the string method um, on, on person. Uh, which have received a person, and because person have a string method, and interface stringer has this method too, they can both apply uh, for the interface of printing, and that's why I can actually mock it and modify the function and make this person printed like this, not just like John 29 years, but use this funny special effects on it. <coughs> concurrency. Concurrency is like the most uh, claimed the most powerful feature of Go, and uh, I can understand why. Uh, when I was uh, introduced to this feature and reading about this, I actually find myself that I don't really see the difference <laughs> between concurrency and parallelism. I was thinking it's quite the same thing. I was thinking it's all about the doing stuff parallelly. So uh, parallelism is uh, def uh, definitely doing. Uh, many things at once, but the concurrency is about dealing uh, with lots of things at once, like s a scheduling, right? So in Go, concurrency is really easy to, to use because you can turn like a simple, simple uh, function in a concurrent one just with two letters. Uh, so this here, with Go say hello, you actually initialize uh, Go routine and it's nothing changed and it's quite simple because I was dealing with a uh, uh, concurrency in Python and there is so many ways especially nowadays it's like uh, asyncio, stackless Python, uh, just a uh, classic method with threads and it's, it was a bit overwhelming to learn but in Go it's just one way and quite simple ones and uh, the core thing uh, in Concurrency is go routines and channels, and go routines are kind of greenish and white weight uh, mo um, thread, and you will avoid the locking hell because uh, you shouldn't think about sharing memory like a lot. You shouldn't think about what lock now and what make wait or something. It go will make it for you, and concurrent code uh, looks, as I mentioned before quite the same as the usual ones. So, uh, for instance, and, uh, with the channels, which actually like a bridge uh, between Go routines, it could be, uh, it could have certain load capacity, it could not, it depends which channel you use, buffered or not. So this is the example of using channels, and as you can see, it's quite simple. And you can specify even uh, strongly having one direction of channel like only receiving or only uh, sending, which is quite useful sometimes and make your program simpler. And uh, the thing in synchronization, like both sender and receiver sh should be ready when logic is happening, otherwise they will wait until they are. And the real life example is generators. Yes, you have to write your own using the concurrency in Go. There is no such a thing as uh, generators like in Python, unfortunately, but well, you can do it. <laughs> and yeah, as you can see, the, the main trick here that you can actually pass the channel to the function and that make all the logic work. And uh, here's the thing, sometimes uh, you don't really want your program like to stack and wait 
while uh, receiver and channel will be free. You want to do something in the meanwhile. And here you go the selects, uh, which actually, which ca this each case will execute uh, if C1 is ready and C2 or C2 is ready. If they both are ready at the same time, it will just pick the random. But if they're not ready at all, you will just uh, fall to default and do your default logic meanwhile. Yes, and here is the example uh, example of executing this program. Uh, defer. Defer is actually quite the same as I explained before. Uh, it commonly used for cleanup, and as I, I will remind you now, it will um, execute the functions uh, which you put in on stack after your main logic uh, happened. So you don't have to really worry about this, and you can put any logic on defer function. Yep. So, <laughs> what have you to what have you chosen or have have you choose anything or like have I ended up like oh my god go is amazing I will stick with that and ditch the Python or not? Not really. I don't think you have to choose, and I I think you should have both, and that's what I was going for. Uh, they both have benefits. This is what I really like in Go. I really like uh, how all. Uh, object-oriented programming structure. It reminds me the Lego computer. Oh, sorry, the Lego constructor, and it's really neat and nice and clear. Go actually teach you to uh, make your code really simple and understand. It's it's easy to pick up. It's easy to understand, and uh, yeah, I like the defer function. It makes everything plain, but it's just for me. I don't really like try except finally thing, but it's not because it's bad. I just don't really <laughs> like it. And I really like to chain, especially Go FMT. You can't really have a different styles on Go, uh, because uh, if you run Go FMT, it will style the code for you and in the right way. And there is a certain strict rules, like you don't have to change, uh, argue about the Egyptian braces. It always just one way. And it's easy to pick up and really fast to learn. And yes, I really like concurrency. <laughs> it's not frustrated there at all. But some things I really miss from the Python, lots of syntax sugar, uh, I really miss it, like list and dictionary handling. You can, you can extend it, you can append it, you can just append it and go. Unfortunately, you don't have to care about capacity. You don't have to think that this slice is just have underlying uh, array and I have to do something with that. And uh, you have uh, dot keys, you have dot values. Python is less verbose. Again, looks simpler. No brackets, no semicolons, but it's like taste thing. And yes, I miss duck typing, <laughs> though probably it will prevent you from making your work from the first time if you're not really experienced. So, <sighs> introducing Go and Python. You can actually mix this two. Uh, because Python can talk to C and Go can talk to C, well, Go can talk to Python. <laughs> um, there is a third party libraries. Um, I was listening to the talk about the Rust, and the first thing I was uh, awesome in Rust that you can easily embed uh, the <coughs> Rust code in Python and easily code that. Uh, unfortunately, that it's not that easy in Go language. You have to use Go uh, third party packages, but then uh, they're not really up to date, and they doesn't have the coroutines conversion, and there is a uh, the memory sharing is not really advised to use. Uh, yeah, this is how it works for nerds. <laughs> if you want to see details, um, yeah, I probably won't do that because uh, embedding Go in Python is quite immature. But when I was just started to learn it, I was so excited. I was thinking, okay, I will now uh, write super fast uh, web crawler. No, I failed. <laughs> so the further reading. I'm not only including the official docs, which is really easy to read and plain, and you can find basically everything there, and even the good things as a Go playground which is basically like JS Fido. You can put your code, you can change it, you can play with that and do it without any IDE. But I included the talks I really enjoy and which helped me to understand the Go better and some articles too. So, thank you.
have a few minutes for questions. Does anyone have a question? No questions. Going once. Going twice. Okay then, let's thank Dana again. <laughs>